Let's get started. Hi, folks. My name is Shane Rogers, and I am pleased to welcome you into the Vermont Wild Kitchen on this beautiful Thursday evening in Vermont. Uh, sitting next to me is Nicole Meyer from Vermont Fish and Wildlife. We are very excited to not only be vaccinated and be able to be in person together, um, but we're also excited to have Kylie from Sunday Bell Farm in North Danville. And it looks like also another companion with you. Yeah. <laughs> um, so hi, Kylie. Welcome hi. to the Vermont Wild Kitchen. We're excited to have you here. Thank you. So tonight, folks, um, we are very pumped to be doing kind of this really fun episode for the middle of summer. We're going to be cooking over the campfire. We're going to be talking about making some raw milk butter and roasted garlic. Uh, Nicole and I are going to be showing you how to prep trout that you can pull right from the Vermont waters. Uh, and also, we lucky enough to find some chanterelles the other week. So we'll be showing you how to ID those and cook those up over the campfire as well. Uh, for this episode, we are uh, pretty pumped to say that not only is Vermont Fish and Wildlife one of our amazing sponsors, but we're excited to welcome Rural Vermont into the mix here. And um, this really lovely uh, collaboration between you know wild food and local cultivated food and really just being able to celebrate how we love all the same things, right? This beautiful landscape and really what it can provide for us in a way that is ecologically sound and utterly delicious at the same time. So as always, we are here to uh, interact with you and uh, please leave your comments in the chat. If you have any stories or questions for Kylie or myself or Nicole, please drop them in. We'll be answering them live over this next hour-ish or so. And without further ado, I am gonna throw this to Kylie, who is going to kick off her demonstration. So Kylie, thanks for being with us. Yes, thank you for having me. Um, hello, my name's Kylie. Um, my husband and I, we own and operate a small raw milk dairy in North Danville, as Shane mentioned earlier. Um, and today I just like to tell you about um, butter. It's surprisingly easy, as is a lot of cheese. Um, it's, in, it's intimidating at first to start, but um, hopefully this video will help you see and learn just how simple it is. Um, so yes, this is cream um, from about a gallon of milk. Um, so I have about two and a half cups here. This is from about a gallon. Um, and is that, the, is that what you're taking off the top, right, yeah. Kylie, from the yeah. milk itself? Yep. So the beautiful thing about um, raw milk or really non-homogenized milk is that the cream um, settles to the top. So um, sometimes you'll see, like, on a milk label, like, shake the jar. And that's because if you don't, you'll get, like, a mouthful of cream. So the saying, the cream rises to the top, that's where that comes from. So if you do buy milk... Um, just know that you can scoop the cream right off the top. You can use like a spoon or I use like, I have like a little quarter measuring, quarter cup measuring cup that I use that works really well. Um, yeah, collect that. Um, one thing that's really helpful for getting the butter to form is if the milk is at room temperature or close to it. Um, cold cream does not like to separate into the buttermilk and the butter. Um, so oftentimes, like if you're troubleshooting, if you're like trying this at home, um, try just like leaving it out on the counter for a little bit. Another thing as well, um, especially with raw milk is um, sometimes it helps to like culture the cream a little bit. So while you have it out on the counter, um, sometimes you can put like a little coffee filter over the top or just like crack the little, little lid a little bit and that'll just kind of help the natural yeast in the air to just inoculate the milk and for whatever reason sometimes that helps it <laughs> separate a little bit better. Does that change the flavor at all or anything or is it? It does change the flavor. Um, it can. A nice, for, a nice fermented taste. You can't really beat that. Yeah just like a not really fermented but more like cheesy more like um 
they sell cultured butter in the store. Um, <laughs> but anyways, just for just for shaking the jar, sometimes that's like another troubleshooting thing that um, people come up against when they're like, why won't it separate? Um, anyways, so yeah, this is a really great activity, especially for kids, um, especially around the fire. Um, it's kind of like watching a magic trick, honestly, as is most cheese making. So um, you'll see I have a little air left in the jar. If you fill the jar all the way full, um, you'll see the cream start to expand a little bit into like whipped cream. Um, we'll get to that point. So important, important tip, leave, leave some room in the jar and just start shaking. Um, <laughs> this is a great activity for groups of people because it does work the muscles a little bit. Um, make, yeah, sure it's tight. make sure you have a good jar with a good lid. Um, this is um, a great, a great way to just like wind down at the end of the day. You're still doing something. You're still working for something as a group, but it's kind of like a nice, it could be like a nice time to just reflect or just let your mind wander. Um, I've seen people like shake butter jars as like a talking stick. <laughs> yeah, I could see yeah. that being, I can see that being a great way to facilitate a conversation yeah. <clears throat> in the future. Yeah, I know when I was, I was telling you kind of like when I was working up in the Northeast Kingdom at Green Mountain Farm to School, this is a, favorite activity of kids you yeah. just give kids a yeah. jar of cream and yeah. you let them just go to town yep. and all of a sudden it's butter that they can yep. enjoy and it also turns into like a race too for some for some kids <laughs> it's like a race it's like a fun race <laughs> exactly and you can't beat the end product like the end product no. usually when you're racing you're just tired and sweaty at the yep. end and here you have something delicious <laughs> to be able to cook yeah Honestly, I haven't done this. I uh, most of the time I just use I, I'll save like a gallon of cream and I'll just throw it in my food processor, and it does the same exact thing. Or um, blender or KitchenAid mixer. Um, some people take uh, like a beater and they'll put it in like a drill and they'll just like go to town. <laughs> or um, like a paint, like those paint stirring sticks in a pot. Oh, nice. But um, and we're, we're dropping are. some recipes, quote unquote recipes in the chat here. Um, you know, like you said, you can do this in a food processor. There's so many different ways to engage with yeah. the raw milk. And so like with your farm, Kai, like how many heads of cattle are you farming with? And, you know, how much are you producing? Where can folks find you? Yeah. And why why raw milk? I know I think some people perhaps uh, have their opinions about raw milk and they yep. just might not know exactly what it's all about. Yeah. If anyone has any specific questions, feel free to ask and Shane will let me know. Um, but we milk right now currently um, four cows twice a day. Um, we sell directly off the farm. Um, there's different tiers for raw milk producers. There's a tier one, which is on-farm sales only. And then there's a tier two where you can do home deliveries. You can go to farmer's markets and you can also um, sell through other farm stands and CSAs. So we are tier two. So we are able to go to um, farmer's markets. This year we're at um, the St. J Farmer's Market, um, which is Saturdays from nine to one. Um, Hardwick in Lindenville, which is Fridays from three to six, and then in Peachum on Sunday from twelve to three. Nice. And, um, yeah, busy, busy weekend. <laughs> and do folks uh, do folks generally have to order from you ahead of time, or can they just show up at the farmers market and you have products all yep. available? Yeah, I like it. Um, I really appreciate if you would like more than two gallons for you to give me a call, email, or text, just so I can prepare for that. Um, but yeah, show up at any of those points. Um, in the winter, we do a home delivery as well, um, just because I know it's a lot harder for folks to get on the road. Yeah. Um, yep, and then our farm store, which is at um, 487 Tampico Road in North Danville, that is open um, seven days a week down to dark and there's usually somebody around. Um, we're more than happy to 
and show you the barn, show you the cows, our milk house, and just talk through things a little bit. Um, there's usually somebody around, but it is self-serve, so. Just That's awesome. Help, right? <laughs> and I mean, in true Vermont fashion, right? I think one of the, the things that is so magical about especially small farmers like yourself is just how accessible you all are, yeah. how you're willing to answer any questions, uh, which again, please feel free to post them in the chat. <laughs> and I know that uh, recently, you know, raw milk in and of itself has kind of expanded here in Vermont and rural Vermont has really been pushing behind that as well. And I know they have an event coming up that we just put in the chat on August 20th and Charlotte that you can have some more details on, but there's a lot of great information out there yeah. for folks who are interested in raw milk, um, let alone just asking your farmer like Kylie, uh, those questions that you may yeah. have. Because Open book. Yeah. I know I personally didn't grow up with raw milk. Um, yeah. So it's definitely, it, it was always, it was an adventure for me the first time. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> so when did you start, uh, when did you start your farm up in North Danville? We started in October of 2020. Um, I had already had a couple cows and we were moving from another dairy that we had been living and working on. And um, yeah, we, raw milk just seemed like the right choice for us because um, as first generation farmers, we had um, just, you know, the barriers of access to land and uh, markets, um, finding a milk contract. So raw milk just seemed like a really great option for us to be able to still milk cows and have our dairy. Um, and also uh, it fit in well with our quality of life and just our general goals for farming to um, provide for our community directly and just build relationships within our community. So um, it just seemed like a good fit after we kind of decided that that was our option. <laughs> and it um, sounds like a lot of a reverence for the food that's being produced definitely. from the land too, yep. which is one of those one of those amazing things that I love about wild food and cultivated food and how closely they are associated when folks are doing it the right way, right? Like you're exploring not only the land that you're on, but really just getting in tune with it and kind of yeah. uh, understanding your place in that ecology of the land as well and how you can provide sustenance for yourself and uh, really, you know, like I said, the land that you're, you're walking on yeah. as well. And I most certainly think about um, my cows and my other animals and the hay and everything, the pasture, but for certain, I also give a fair amount of consideration towards um, the wild aspects. I mean, you can't avoid it. It's going to happen. And they, they're they just as much as part of our farm as anything else. You know, it's, it's like... Uh, it's like one in the same in some ways. It's, it's, yeah. I, for me, the long-term relationship with my cows is what I really appreciate about dairy farming. And I don't really hunt. Um, I haven't fished in years, haven't had time, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I don't know. It just seems like different, but it comes from that relationship with the wild, but it comes from like the same place in your heart of just connection to place and like how you approach where you live and where you come from and how you eat. And the food paired together is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> like I, and we're going to get into forget. it too, but yeah. I know you're, you're roasting garlic here as well. And uh, we were talking about trout and chanterelle mushrooms, but you really can't beat some freshly made butter being thrown into your tin foil over oh, yeah. the open fire as well. Yeah. How's the, how's it looking in your, in your jar there? We haven't even made it to whipped cream yet. Oh, <laughs> wait a minute. It always happens so much faster than I think, especially like in the hot summer, like sitting next to a fire and like I've had my cream out for like 30 minutes beforehand, but oh. I think we're at butter actually. 
We miss whipped cream. That happened fast. Got distracted talking. Oh, you can't really see, but. Oh no, you can see it. Looks a little. Yeah. It looks a little lumpy. I don't yeah, know how many times I've been the, trying to make whipped cream and have gone straight to butter without yep. realizing it. And I'm glad you asked as well because it is really easy to over whip butter, and then you just kind of end up with like a nasty mush of like butter and milk particles, and it's just chicken food. <laughs> chicken yeah, food. absolutely. Um, oh so yeah, I'm glad you asked, but um, yeah, you'll see like. The problem, one of the issues with like skimming off the jar is for like the last quarter inch of cream, it's like really easy to pull in milk. Okay. Into yeah. And that kind of makes it a little bit harder to separate. And also um, it, it's a little bit harder to see. That's probably what happened here. But um, yeah, we got buttermilk and we got, we got butter. Let me pull out a little bit. Awesome. I just have like a spoon, but. Oh my God, look at that. Yeah. It looks amazing. And that so, only took like 15 minutes or so? Yeah, that was 15 wow. minutes. Yeah. Top. It's not, um, it's not, it doesn't look like butter because you have to like press all of the buttermilk out of it. But um, yeah, you'll, if you do it a couple times, you'll, you'll get the hang of it and you'll see like, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Butter. That's so, that's yeah. so great. So that's that. And um, some people save the buttermilk. Some people drink it straight up. Some people bake with it. Um, I'm personally a fan of the putting it in biscuits and pancakes and all yeah. of that fun stuff. Yeah, for sure. So um, it all gets to be used. Which yeah. Is that's what we aim for. So, um, yeah, I'll just I'll uh, deal with this a little bit, I guess. The issue... I guess the only problem with like, or thing to be aware of with it being so hot outside and being next to the fire is that butter really likes it to be cold. And so once you get to this point, um, it's kind of challenging to walk. It's called washing the butter when you get the buttermilk out of the butter, butter curds. And so, yeah, we'll just play around with that a little bit. Usually I'll have like a little cold water that I'll like pour in there just to help it keep solid, keep it from melting. But um, yeah. We'll see, so, see how it goes. Yeah, and you're going to be using this directly, right? Um, yeah. With your garlic, awesome. Let's yeah. see. It. Let's see how it goes. Yeah. All right. Um. Yeah. Um. Some people will like put a little salt in it or um, some herbs. We have garlic today. I just have um. So, I guess you could use really like any allium, which is like. A, you know, that oniony, garlicky flavor, which even from like the very first of the year all the way to the very end of the year, um, whether it be like spring onions that you find out in the woods or chives or scallions, leeks later on. Um, right now is green garlic, time for green garlic. And I think it's like a little bit late for garlic scapes. They came so early this year too. I it was wild to see them. Yeah. All like early <laughs> June it's um, like. it's summer. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this is just some green garlic that I picked up from um, a farm stand nearby. And I um, don't want to burn myself, but I just have it in a little tin foil, and then I just like kind of put it in the side of my fire. Like if you've ever done like tin foil veggies, or um, baked potato by the fire. And I think that's like the best part about cooking outside is that if you have some tin foil, you basically can cook anything and everything. <laughs> so if you get some logs, you get a fire going, let it burn down and wrap whatever you have in tin foil and add some fat like the butter and you're going to be pretty good to go with a delicious meal. Yeah. See what happens. So um, this is just like a whole head of, this is a whole head of garlic that I had and I just cut the top off. Um, and like I said, this was green garlic, so I'll just peel away the skin a little bit and pull out a clove and it should be like spreadable at this point. Um, which, oh my gosh. yeah, it's kind of, it's like unreal. And you could just eat that straight up with a spoon too, if you are oh, yeah. so interested. Just keep the, keep the bugs away, the vampires, <laughs> especially if you're camping. Um, not if you, maybe not if you're like sleeping in a tent with someone. 
But um, that's a good point too, though. You can <laughs> garlic. Garlic is an easy thing to bring camping with you. You're not gonna have to keep it cold. You can just throw the yeah. whole thing in there and have yeah. something delicious. And if you're oh, going camping, with someone, yeah. If you're going camping with someone who doesn't like garlic, then I think you need to find a new camping partner. <laughs> I exactly, think yeah. like that's like a Which real conversation. Way. Yeah, out of the way yeah. first. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, I probably um had this on the fire for probably 45 minutes to be honest so it is a little bit of a dedication but um i'll try and pull a clove out it's so this is like a clove and it's just like perfectly like spreadable oh so, that see that's now more. yeah we're gonna be talking trout here in a second and i just wish that we were all around the same fire <laughs> Because that would have been perfect to be yeah. putting on the inside of the trout. Is there anything else that you wanted to add, Kylie? And I mean, you're going to stick around and yeah. um, drop knowledge. So if people have any questions still for Kylie about raw milk, definitely drop them into the chat. Uh, like yeah. I mentioned earlier, Rural Vermont has a ton of great resources on it. They've been doing a lot of great work to help farmers like Kylie navigate the system, which is yeah, not always easy. No. And it can be very convoluted. So we're very thankful for um, Rural Vermont, but also that people like Kylie are able to make a living and yeah. make some really delicious products yeah. for us to enjoy as well. Yep. Um, yeah, I just saw they had a, they have a whole bunch of like fact sheets and like mm -hmm. they break down the tier system, um, just all that convoluted information. They just break it right down. Um, as a as somebody who just started raw milk this year reaching out to rural vermont and making that connection was extremely helpful as i started my business um the agency of ag people as well for sure reach out to them um your inspector like everyone i've found so far has been just super supportive and super helpful which i know isn't the case in every single state so um definitely thankful for everyone in Vermont um, working for the farmers right now. Um, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, yeah. thank you again, Kylie. Thank you. And, uh, we are very excited uh, yeah. to have you there. And we're excited to also talk about some wonderfully wild food yeah. that would be able to pair nicely, not only with the roasted garlic, but also that handshake and butter too. So Today, I uh, have Nicole Meyer, who's joined us before and is a uh, force behind the scenes of the Vermont Wild Kitchen. And we're going to be talking trout, and we're going to be talking a little bit of um, mushrooms as well. So, Nicole, thank you for joining us. Yeah. We are very Absolutely. excited. And let's see. So does anyone know? Uh, my name is Nicole Meyer, she, her. I work for Vermont Fish and Wildlife. Uh, really glad to be here today. Uh, we're gonna be, like like Shane said, we're gonna be cooking up some trout on the campfire. Um, this is something that I grew up eating as a kid and uh, never appreciated until I was an adult how easy and delicious this is. Um, especially if you're camping and have gone fishing that day and you've got, um, buttload of fish um this is something really good to do with all of those fish and it does not involve filleting a fish unless you want to fillet that fish that's great more power to you um but this is just this is just a, such a simpler easier way um to uh to take care of that fish so uh i don't know if anyone watching knows what kind of fish this is that we have here can we see Whoop, there we go can anybody anybody care to guess? My guess would have been trout. So okay, uh, what Vermont has <laughs> multiple species of trout. Shane, come on. So what um, is it? Trout are in the salmonoid family. Um, so this is a brook trout. It's the uh, state uh, state fish of Vermont. I was gonna say state bird. Not the state bird. <laughs> no. Nope. Um, 
Uh, brook trout is the state fish of Vermont. Uh, we have two raw uh, brook trout here and one that just finished up cooking on the fire. Um, John and I are, are running tandem on the fire here. Thank you, John. Um, so, so this is a really easy, simple recipe. Again, uh, you can bring all of the ingredients with you to your campsite. You can even forage some of the ingredients for this um, besides foraging the fish. Um, uh, it, it's, it's really easy because really all you're doing is stuffing the fish with delicious things, yep. including um, my two favorite ingredients for any recipe, which are butter and garlic which Kylie was just yes. talking about. Um, so uh, so we've got two brook trout here. Shane, do you want to show how you're... We're just going to clean this trout. And so what we're going to do is Shane's going to make an incision starting from um, basically the anal vent uh, and going right up to the jaw. And if you want, you can cut the head off of that fish or you can leave the head. Um, leaving the head is like a is a very pretty presentation um but some people don't don't want to see the head you can chop off the tail too if you want a lot of people like to fry fish tails and eat them like chips um that's something cool as well so shane's made that um single cut <clears throat> and there's just a lot of stuff inside the fish that makes it work uh when it's alive heart <laughs> liver Right. Um, all that, all that good stuff, the stomach, which, uh, if you've got some, um, curious kids, it's really fun to actually, um, look to see what's inside of that stomach and what has, what in the world has that fish been eating? Um, but take all that stuff out. So basically all you see in there is, um, is meat. Um, and Shane is going to clean that up there for us. Um, and then all you're gonna do is stuff it with those delicious ingredients, wrap it in tin foil, and throw it on throw it on your fire. Yep. So as you see, right, we have the one without the head on it, nice and presented. Some of the bones sticking out, and I left the head on this one. Um, Presentation. Because it doesn't. I mean, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. matter. Um, the the cool thing again about this is that it is super easy compared to filleting. Um, filleting is, can be tedious, uh, especially if you're like at your campsite. It, it can just be a tedious process. With this, the one disadvantage is that you do have to be really careful about the bones. Um, but the great thing is that when it's done cooking, um, the, the flush just kind of flakes right off of the bone. Yep. So the nice thing about this and cooking on the campfire uh, kind of like Kylie was saying, is you just need some tin foil, right? So we have a nice square piece of tin foil. We're going to plop the fish just right in there. We will add I've got some, some garlic and olive oil here that um, that I really just like would love to add here. So there's like a whole metric ton of garlic in there. Um, and the oil is nice too to rub on the skin um, because it helps uh, it helps to keep the skin from sticking from the tin foil. We can also throw some garden herbs in there, like um, some, basil. some basil and parsley, and then it gives you kind of like a little pesto vibe, yeah. you know. And I mean, you can't beat fresh herbs that you're pulling right from the garden, yeah. your porch, what have food. you, from the farmer down the road. Um, so we put parsley, basil, some oregano in there, and that was just what you've been growing on yeah. your patio. Yeah, this is just from my porch steps. Are we going to do anything else with this one? Uh, I think that one's good. I mean, look at how how much stuff is in there, right? You can see, like, that. that's a pretty good-looking fish. It's a fish and salad. That's your whole meal right there. <laughs> yeah. So you just take this, kind of wrap this up, close up the top. Fold it up kind of like a nice, neat little birthday present. Packet. Yeah, there you go. And we'll take this other one and another presentation, like you said, without the head. But we're going to take basically the same prep right here. I'm going to move this down a little bit. So we have garlic and butter on this one. Yeah, so we have some raw garlic that we're going to be throwing in. And we are going to just take some of that butter that we unfortunately did not make um although next time that we have kylie on i think we're going to be around her fire yeah. and making sure that um 
we can put this all on the trout with that garlic and the butter. We have some raw garlic and um, one of the best things to throw into any fish is just a lemon, right? Mm -hmm. So take that, throw that in a couple wedges and that's just going to give it a nice little tang. But again, one of the things that I think is probably most important here is the fact that this is so simple and so easy. And I know sometimes folks who maybe aren't necessarily sure how to go about cleaning one of the fish from Vermont, there are tons of videos online. Vermont Fish and Wildlife has done an amazing job at making sure that there is information available for folks to be able to learn these skills, right? This food is out there in the wild. It's there to be caught. And uh, it's a great way to not only have a delicious meal, but to pair it with some of that delicious food that we see being grown here right in the state too. Yeah. And I mean, there's some really great um, opportunities coming up for you to learn how to fish and then eat and prepare and eat that fish. So um, July 27th, we're going to be partnering with the National Wild Turkey Federation to do a wild game um, foraging and cooking seminar at the Intervale Center. Um, there's going to be perch tacos. There's going to be um, deer. I forget what they're doing with the deer, but there's also going to be moose and um, bear as well are going to be showcased there. That's a cool in-person event um, at the Intervale, July 27th. Um, this fall, we're also partnering with um, 4-H and Forest Parks and Rec to do um, our uh, outdoor family weekend where we'll have um, some let's go fishing clinics as well as um, wild game cooking clinics with Shane. Shane's going to be teaching there. That'll be a ton of fun. Um, that's for people of all experience levels. There's tons of stuff to do at Outdoor Family Weekend from um, shooting to making a walking stick to fishing to forest bathing and everything in between. Mountain biking, whatever you can think about doing in the outdoors, it's probably available for you to do at Outdoor Family Weekend. Um, uh, I had another, another fun event um, and I don't remember what it was now. I think one of the things that um, Nicole is saying is that there's just a ton of things going on. So going on. Um, check out Vermont Fish and Wildlife's Facebook page as well as their website. And uh, you'll be able to find something for not only you, but your whole family. Yeah. So I think with um, these packaged up, what we're going to do is just kind of show you a little bit of how to throw these onto the fire effectively. Um, so we have Nicole there. And our fire has been burning for a little bit of time, about an hour now. Uh, so you guys can't necessarily see in here, but what we have are some nice, just hot coals, which is really what you're looking for. You don't want that flame coming up. Um, you want something that's going to um, really bake it right into the tin foil. And more or less, what we're going to do is just kind of toss these right in and then cover them up with any of the other logs and the ashes. And it's as simple as that. And the best part about cooking over the open fire is you can not only do that with your, um, while you're out camping at one of the Vermont state parks, but you could do this in your backyard with your friends and your family while shaking butter and having a great conversation all at the same time. Yeah, and you know, speaking of Vermont state parks, um, what we've done right here, making a campfire and cooking over a campfire, those are each five points on the Venture Vermont Challenge, which is a really fun activity to do over the summer with your family. Um, it's basically a scavenger hunt of things to do and play outside. Um, and the more points you get, um, you, when you get enough points, you get a free state parks pass for the rest of that year and a parks pass for the next year. Besides that, it's a lot of fun. Things like um, camping under the stars or swimming in a river. I mean, just tons of really fun stuff to do. Yeah. Um, and I mean, it, it's just it's just a really cool program. One of my neighbors, uh, they do it every single year, and we're starting to do it every year with our kid too, which is uh, a lot. It's it's a lot of fun. Yeah. So that fish is gonna sit on the coals for about 10, 15 minutes or so. 
And through the magic of Facebook Live, what we already have is a fully cooked fish. So we put this up, Ooh, spilling some juice. As you can see, we have a nice flaky filet. It kind of looks like a mess, but I promise you that it is delicious, nice and cooked. This one was flavored with the lemon, some butter, um, basil and oregano. And you really just can't beat eating fish coming straight out of the river and straight out of the campfire. And the great thing, the great thing too about brook trout is that they're found in pretty much every small running cold river in Vermont. Um, that's one of the reasons why they're the state fish. They're really prolific, um, yeah. fun fish to catch. And they're, they're a very prolific fish. We stock them too here in Vermont. Um, so, uh, so it's a fish that you can for sure catch. And we have resources on our website too, for, uh, for how to and where to catch fish. And folks, we're very excited for you to be joining us as our fish cooks. Um, you know, we're going to add in one last thing, uh, that we're going to be talking about wild food before we get you going, but mushrooms, the chanterelles are going crazy right now and we weren't necessarily going to talk about this but i was lucky enough to be out in the woods yesterday and just found pounds and pounds of these beautiful golden chanterelles which uh, are my absolute favorite mushrooms so i wanted to encourage you all to look outside take a trip through the woods while you're walking and if you see some of these orange just kind of globes popping up definitely give them a look and see right so the way that you're going to be able to ID a chanterelle is first off by that yellow orange color, right? Now that isn't the only thing because there are going to be some lookalikes, but one of the big important things is underneath here on the bottom, you're going to see what they call false gills. Now how that differs from true gills is that they are a little smushed. They're not as like flaky as being able to um, have the true straight gills and more or less, you're not going to be able to peel them off. And then the other thing to look out for with this is that when you open up the chanterelle down the middle, you're going to get this nice bright white color that kind of looks like string cheese, right? And you can just peel this off. And um, with that as well, you can give it a sniff. And it kind of has that fruity, a little apricot type of flavor to it. Now, there are a couple of lookalikes. So you have your jack-o'-lanterns and your fall chanterelles, which will definitely give you an upset stomach. But if you are out there and you're looking, it's relatively easy to be able to ID this out. Now, of course, I say all of this. Um, do not go eat wild edibles that you're not 100% sure of. Um, but when you start getting into this and you start looking, uh, this just adds a whole new dynamic to some of the food that you can be collecting. Like, of course, you can go out fishing and there's nothing better than visiting a farm stand. But I've never been more excited than stumbling upon kind of a flush of mushrooms in the woods. Yeah. And it definitely got me hooked into this whole idea of wild food that's out there for us to enjoy. Um, I'm going to put in the chat as well a way to help you ID chanterelles if you're looking and there's some great other resources out there. Uh, the Vermont Foragers Facebook page is a great resource where I learned a lot. And pick up a guidebook. It's the same with anything. The more you practice, the more you look, uh, the more that you're going to be able to learn. And my favorite thing to do with chanterelles is throw them in butter with some garlic and some lemon and some salt. And that is another thing that is going to be wonderful over the open fire as we eat our dinner tonight. So I think with that, you know, we're going to wrap up our episode here and we are very excited to not only have had you here, but to be able to kind of demonstrate how to cook over this open campfire. Our fish right now is sizzling away and Kylie, we cannot say thank you enough for having you on today. Uh, just being able to demonstrate how easy it is for us to make butter, but also that our raw milk and our ability to access that is widely available throughout Vermont. And again, Kylie's with Sunday Bell Farm in North Danville. And I would highly recommend, like you said, visiting your farm stand. It has the best hours from um, sun up to sundown, I think you said. Uh, yeah. And I, it sounds like you can uh, often be caught around the property too and are willing to uh, yeah. show some folks around. 
but for sure, uh, definitely send me an email or give me a call if um, you want more of a official walk around. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, with that, folks, we're going to close the Vermont Wild Kitchen for this evening. We're going to be back next month. It is the third Thursday of every month at 5 p.m. on Facebook Live. I don't know what we're going to be cooking, but we're going to see what's in season and really start to just dive into another fun wild edible. Kylie, thank you again for joining thank us. You. Nicole. Thank you for all of your knowledge always. And uh, for the future folks, feel free to tag Vermont Fish and Wildlife and Rule Vermont in your wild food or cultivated food photos and use by BT Wild Kitchen on Instagram or Twitter, and we will definitely find you. So thank you again, and I hope everybody has a wonderful evening. Thank you.